You might all enjoy playing outdoors. Have you seen when you throw a ball, roll a ball, it goes for a little distance and automatically stops. It stops even when no force is applied to it. Have you ever thought why does it happen? Why am I able to write with this pen? Why am I able to tie a knot? All these questions could simply be answered with one concept and that's what is friction. We have a video here demonstrating how a speeding vehicle comes in but puts a brake and stops. Now when the vehicle is putting the brake and stopping, what it is creating is actually a friction. There are various experiments to help understand this. Let's say I take a piece of brick, I pull it. I would require a lot of force to pull it. But what if I wrap this brick in a polythene bag and then I drag it? It would be a relatively smoother task for me. So what happens when there is a body, you are applying a force onto it. There is a force which tries to resist that movement. And this is called as friction, right? So this is the force that you are applying to pull the object. But there is another force which is resisting the motion which is trying to go forward. And this is called as friction. So it opposes any relative motion which appears between two surfaces. Now, I take a very simple example. This can be demonstrated because of irregularities. Let's say I have a mobile phone here. I keep it on the surface. Now, there are small, small irregularities which are present on both the surface. You'll help understand with this diagram. So let's say this is a book which is on the table. Now this book, the contact surface between this book and this table, as you can see, has a small number of irregularities. Now friction is caused by these irregularities that occur. Now these irregularities which occur between the two surfaces creates the friction which resists or opposes the motion. If these irregularities, if these irregularities are reduced, that means the friction would reduce and there would be easier movement. So when you oil the surface, when you lubricate the surface, in the case certain times you air cushion the surface, in those cases this friction reduces. So the irregularities which are created are reduced and as a result you have smoother flow or more easier movement of the things that occur. Now, that means if the surface is rough, there are more irregularities that would be present. If the surface is smooth, then there would be less number of irregularities that would be present. So friction would again increase if the two surfaces are pressed hard. I take a very simple example. I have a mat on the floor. Now I want to drag that mat this would be an easier task for me. Now let's say one of my friends say, oh, nice mat and sits onto the mat. Now I'm asked to drag the mat. I would have to have more effort to drag it. Now as the force increases to pull it, the friction force would again increase because the two surfaces are pressed more hard against one another. So as the two surfaces are pressed more hard towards one another, then you would experience a higher amount of friction that would resist the forward movement of that mat. Another important thing that we need to understand is uh, if we talk about an inc inclined plane, I see a ball which rolls down this inclined plane. Now what is resisting the movement of this ball is the friction which is called as rolling friction. We will understand types of friction in a while. But why I have brought an inclined plane here is to demonstrate an interesting thing. Now let's say when this ball is rolling down, I have huge amount of sand which is present here. What would happen? This ball would resist and come to stop. However, if this material has an oil base, this base where the ball is coming, rolling, has an oil base, it would further move at a faster pace. Why again? Because of friction. 
so for all these queries and questions we have a simple answer and that is what is friction so this friction can be explained in two forms when the object is at rest and still there is a resist that occurs that it does not allow it to move is what is called as static friction the other one is called as uh, kinetic or dynamic friction either terms is fine so example of static friction can be explained when a book is on a table kinetic or dynamic friction can be of two types sliding friction or rolling friction sliding friction a person moving down a slide as you can see is an example of classic uh, sliding friction classic example of sliding friction a ball rolling is a classic example of rolling friction there is another friction which is known as fluid friction now fluid friction the friction the movement that opposes the movement in a fluid is called as drag now there are shapes which are specifically designed to cut the resistance of the air for example if you have been in aeroplanes you would see a special shape of the aeroplane the same happens with birds because they are able to cut the resistance of the air and fly so that they require lesser energy and consume uh, their shapes actually make them suitable to reduce the fluid friction so this is a really interesting thing so frictional force when it is in fluid be it liquid be it air we call it as a drag now this drag depends on the speed with which the the speed of the fluid and the nature of the fluid so two things on which it would depend is one is the speed the other is the nature of fluid what kind of fluid it is and how fast this fluid is flowing so even uh, we talked about air right now so when we talk about aeroplanes birds we mentioned about air but the same thing would apply to water as well so fishes a good example submarine another good example for water right so the shape is specifically designed to cut the friction again now sliding friction and rolling friction uh, let's say you have a parcel you slide it from the top of a hill and on the other hand you keep it keep the same luggage on wheels and roll it what would happen the friction which is applied in rolling is relatively less okay so what we can say is sliding friction is smaller than the static friction i can simply say the static friction among these is the highest in order followed by sliding friction followed by rolling friction rolling friction is the least so let's say you have gone to a railway station or an airport you have a luggage now let's say you have a luggage which is a suitcase now that suitcase can either have wheels or without wheels you drag a suitcase without wheels you would have a lot of friction that you would have to apply and on the other hand if you have the luggage or the suitcase with wheels and now you try to drag it you would use less amount of uh, uh, force and therefore lesser friction also so rolling friction among these is the least a little higher than that is the sliding friction and a very high amount of friction is seen when there is a static friction now friction is called as necessary but it is evil as well why it is necessary i want to drink a cup of tea but if i am not able to hold that cup of tea what would happen definitely i might get burned similarly i want to drink a glass of water but i am not able to hold it if the glass is too oily too lubricated i won't be able to drink the water so why is it necessary i can hold a glass of water a cup of tea i can write i can fix a nail i can tie a knot a teacher can write with the chalk on a blackboard why because those chalk particles will stick to the blackboard a object if it is moving would not stop if there is no friction so the things would keep colliding to one another that does not happen in the real world that means what happens is 
friction is necessary even when we are on roads we are using cycles automotives automobiles if there is no friction the things would keep colliding with one another which is not of course a right solution so this is one of the important things that must be taken into account but this friction is evil as well why it is evil it generates heat in certain circumstances and can cause even fire in extreme cases so when things are being rubbed there is heat which is produced and this can sometimes if not controlled can lead to fire uh, friction also slows down the thing allows you or makes you uh, brings in a mandate that you apply more force in order to complete your task uh, if you are walking your shoes get worn or torn why because of friction the tires of the vehicle you would have to replace it every 5 to 6 years why because the treading or the treads what we call as of the tire actually um, are um, no more there and this becomes the surface becomes smooth and as a result there is a reduced friction so uh, sole of the shoes reduces the friction uh, then um, if the sole is not good what would happen the friction would be very less if the sole is good it does not allow me to slip then it would increase the friction similarly the tire is there if there are no proper markings in the tire the uh, depressions the grooves in the tire it would allow the tire to slip so when there is proper treads that are there in the tire as they are called as it increases the friction uh, also in the braking system of the automobiles there are brake pads and they increase the friction uh, let's say you are playing a game of kabaddi now when you are playing game of kabaddi you might have seen uh, the players take the soil rub their hand with soil why that is to increase friction similarly if there is a gymnast the gymnast would also actually uh, put some coarse uh, substance on hand and that is to have a good grip so for gripping what is required is increasing the friction so friction becomes necessary in that circumstances but in certain cases we do require to reduce the friction because if the machinery is having too much friction uh, the output or the productivity would reduce so to reduce friction what is required is oil lubrication sometimes oil is not available so air cushions are used or there are some instruments in which oiling cannot be done so in the that circumstances air cushions can be used also ball bearings are present ball bearings are present in bicycles and automobiles and that is to reduce the friction when we talked about luggage suitcase with wheels that is again to reduce the friction uh, we are using rolling friction and it would reduce the total amount of friction which is there another way to reduce the friction is one important game that you might like to play during your summer holidays and that is the carom board so what you do on the carom board is you put certain powder now on the carom board when you put powder what you are trying to do is you are trying to lubricate the surface make it more smooth so that your uh dice can go or your uh, card could go a little farther and that is where you are trying to reduce the amount of friction so we talked about why friction is necessary why friction is also considered as evil in circum certain circumstances why and how you can increase the friction and reduce the friction so those are some of the interesting things and topics that we have discussed for this session i hope you enjoyed and lot of preparation material for your science is available on the links below wish you good luck